Hi folks, Speedway Tag here. I'd like to show you a quick little two-player game called Fluttering Souls with a butterfly theme um, by Joel Lewis. It's been around for a couple of years, but I still think you can get your hands on this. It's a great little um, theme. Fluttering Souls is a captivating, beautifully illustrated two-player game, card drafting game based on the Japanese legend of the white butterfly. And on the rule book over here, a rule page, you get a nice little write-up about that Japanese legend, which I think adds nicely to the game, the theme and the context of what you're doing. You've got these wonderful, um, w beautifully made white butterfly uh, meeples, which only track your score basically in the game. If you win a round, you get one of those. And if you win three of those, in other words, three rounds, you win the game. So it's kind of best, best of five rounds. Um, we place the great egg fly butterfly card over there. There's two, always two cards that are not used in the game, so that's really cool. So you don't know what they are. So it just messes with your plans a little bit. You've got a deck full of uh, initial layouts here, okay? And you draw one, which I have, and, I, and you put it at the bottom of the deck there, and that's gonna be the layout for round one. And I've laid the cards out according to that um, sequence. So that means a certain number um, face up and a certain number face down. And all you do to play this game, let's have a look at some of the, the butterflies. 88, the Monarch butterfly, we get a lot of them around here near my place. Um, you've got uh, Monarchs, what else? We've got a Blue Morpho, uh, and there's a Swallowtail up there as well. Not a lot of cards in this game, but you don't really need it. The way the game is played is, uh, so the person going second gets to take the Great Egg Fly. So I'll talk about that in a minute. And on your turn, basically, you are just um, card drafting from the, from the from the setup here, the structure. Um, there's a rule around drafting, which I'll tell you. And uh, when all the all the butterflies have been taken, you just score according to the set collecting that you've done. The cards that are available for drafting are cards that are open in inverted commas, and open cards are these four at the bottom at the moment. Any card that's that's been covered by another card in any way is considered close. But if I went ahead and took uh, this 88 for my first turn and placed it in front of me, now this blue morpho is open to my opponent. So this is open and also these three as well. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, you are trying to uh, set collect, obviously. That's telling you up here, if you get all three of, of this kind of butterfly, you'll get um, a certain number of points, you'll get the... Uh, okay, let's see. It's telling you if you get two, actually, because there's two two cards in, the, in that icon. Sorry, I missed that. If you get two 88s, you get three points. So that's how it works, as you can see here. Um, if you get uh, four of the mon Monarchs, you get eight points. If you get three of the Monarchs, you get five points. If you get two of them, you get two points. Uh, if you get uh, three of the blue morphos, you'll get four points. So you'll get used to that um, scoring situation. The swallowtails are really interesting. If you get um, two of them, you can use them as a single wild to, to make up another set, which is really handy. Or if you just get one by itself, it's still worth two points to you. So here's the strategy. The strategy is you can actually see what's out there and you can start to manipulate your opponent as to revealing or making... Um, uh, open cards, uh, forcing them to take cards. Maybe they'll force you to take cards. Uh, you might have to formulate a couple of strategies based on what starts getting taken. For example, if I want to keep collecting 88s, I'm in a good position here. Uh, this person's going next. So, you know, they might take this 88 to stop me from doing that. And they might think they can collect 88s. Um, the, the person with the great egg fly, um, it's a really... Um, weird card, but I like what it does. Whoever's got it can replace the card that they do, just took from the tableau with the great, great egg fly. So if this person wanted to st stop me from taking that monarch, um, for some reason, if I'm collecting monarchs, they can replace what they just took with that great egg fly. Okay? And so it, it blocks me. So it's it, But now, if I take this great egg fly... Uh, I can do the same thing later in the game. So that this is a really interesting um, uh, uh, card to, to time well when you use it to use to your advantage. Okay, if I might take my 88 here because I'm trying to collect 88s. That makes these all open. Uh, they might start taking Monarchs and start collecting Monarchs. 
Uh, I'll take my third 88, which is really good because now I've got three of them. Oh, I actually don't really need three, do I? I only need two for two for three points. Hmm. So maybe I might start going for these blue morphos. So I'll take I'll, I'll take that blue morpho over there and bring that here. Uh, they might. They've got an, a monarch that's open to them because they want. Now they've got two monarchs, which gives them two points. If they get three, they'll get five points. Good points, the monarchs. Um, and there's another one sitting right there. So um, they might have that turn. I might take another blue morpho to get uh, another one down here. If I get three, I'm getting four points. Right, that's opened up a couple of the face down cars. The minute they become open, then you can flip them. And that's really nice because that will change your strategy mid game once you see what's what's underneath those cards or you can predict based on what's been taken so far. And so um, this person might uh, want their pair of 88, so they'll take that. Uh, this, this is really handy, this Swallowtail. If I get the second Swallowtail, I can use it as another while, so I might take that Swallowtail. Um, they might take the, hmm, they might take this 88 for some reason, but place their Great Eggfly there to stop me from getting access to those uh, face down cards, which means I have to take another 88 or a Monarch. I don't really want Monarch, so that was well played, the Great Eggfly. And we keep going like this until all the cards are taken. Okay, then we will score up based on the scoring conditions on the cards. And whoever wins that round will get one of these fantastic little um, meeples, butterfly meeples. And then we will draw another card from here and set the set the tableau up looking like this. This is an interesting one with, a, with the four face down cards all over the place. And then we'd add these uh, these missing cards back into the mix, shuffle them up, and deal it out so it's in this formation. So there's always two cards that that you don't know what they are at first, not in the tableau. So that creates a little bit of variability in the game. But effectively, it's just a simple card drafting game, set collecting with a couple of nice little um, twists with that uh, great egg fly over here not knowing what those two cards are and the formations as well as an it's a quite a good deck of formations as well which um which actually works very well um the legend of the of the uh white butterfly is very interesting too many years ago an apprentice merchant named takahama fell hopelessly in love with a woman named akiko they became engaged but he died before they could wed uh, Takahama was destroyed. He had um, built a life and a successful career, but he could not bear to be away from his love. Such was his dedication. He abandoned his trade and gave his life uh, to the upkeep of the cemetery where she was buried. And you can read the rest of that story. It's quite interesting. As, it, as I said, it adds a nice little um, tone to the, to the game and uh, adds to the theme and the context. But Fluttering Souls is the sort of game that we like to take along with us if we're going to a restaurant. Um, and we haven't got too much space. Oh, I, look, it does take a bit of space, as you can see, but usually at a restaurant, this works out fine. We just love card drafting and set collecting, and this hits both of those spots in a very nice and um, quick and easy way. There's enough strategy in there to, to make it fun and to make it competitive. And, yeah, it's a nice little two-player game if you can get hold of. So that's Fluttering Souls. See you later.